Good evening, Perfect. everybody, and uh, welcome to this meeting uh, of the City Planning Committee uh, for Monday the 20th of June. I'd like to welcome all of the committee who are all present um, and members of the public who might be uh, in the gallery or watching today. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge uh, that in recognition of the deep history and culture of this place, I wish to acknowledge the tr traditional custodians of the land upon which the city of Hobart was built. I acknowledge the determination and resilience of the Palawa people of Tasmania, La Trawita, who have survived invasion and dispossession and who continue to maintain their identity, culture and rights. I recognise the value of continuing Aboriginal knowledge and cultural practice and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. So this will be live streamed or is being live streamed and I ask that all um, elected members um, just turn off their phones or, or switch it to silent, please. We have no so we don't need to co-opt anybody. Can I have somebody confirm the minutes from last our special meeting and the, the meeting on the 14th, uh, on the 6th of June? Thank you, Alderman Barakas, and thank you for chairing um, those meetings. Those, those in favour? Those against? Items carried. Uh, consideration, consideration of supplementary items? I don't think we have any. No. OK. Item four is indication of pecuniary or conflicts of interests. No conflicts, no declarations. Item five, transfer of agenda items. Yes, Gordon as indicated, Briscoe. Chair, earlier before the meeting, I'd like to um, move that the question without notice answer, it's on the close to be moved into the open. Okay, so that's 5.1. Uh, I'll put that to the committee, all those in favour, all those against, items carried. Item six is planning authority items, consideration of items with deputations. Can I have somebody move that, please? Alderman Barakas, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? Items carried. And we go, um, uh, we're now item seven, committee acting as a planning authority. And I think all of these are under the City of Hobart interim planning scheme. And we'll go to 7.1.4, which is three, Bimbadine Court, West Hobart, and adjacent road reserve garage and studio. And I'll call uh, Mr Gaetano Palmese to come to the table, please. Thanks. So if you just take one of those seats there. And you have uh, five minutes to address the committee. Thank you. And uh, there'll be questions. I've got some papers to, to dispense. Is that possible? Yes. OK. We'll ask uh, Mr Bell to hand those around. Okay, far away. Thank you. Except for myself, which I inadvertently gave. Uh, anyway. Thank you. So 
I was just giving a note. Okay, so, uh, the principal um, representation has been about the setbacks and building envelope for all dwellings. So 10.4.2, the objectives as stated from the planning scheme are provide reasonably consistent separation between dwellings and, other, and their frontages within the street, provide consistency in the apparent scale bulk massing of a portion of the dwelling. So the primary two objectives is the ones that I'm, I'm uh, addressing. Uh, and we, in regard to setbacks, setbacks are, uh, are um, assessed under two, two uh, sub clauses, A1 and A2. A1 being for dwellings, excluding garages, and A2 for um, garages. So those garage, um, dwellings and garages assessed are uh, considered separately in terms of the setbacks. Um, and if, if an item cannot, can't meet the um, performance, the acceptable, acceptable uh, standard of 4.5 metres, then, then refer to the, to the, um, to the uh, performance criteria. Uh, and again, they're considered separately. So the performance criteria for, for a dwelling have a setback from a frontage that's compatible with the streetscape, having regard to any topographical constraints. And, and also, similarly for garage or carport, uh, for a carport must have a setback that's, that's compatible with the, with the, with the um, existing, with the, compatible with the, uh, with the uh, streetscapes. So I have no issue with the garage. So I guess what's, what's happening is the, plan, the planning report seems to assess the dwelling as one unit, it doesn't, it, or as one building, it doesn't uh, separate the garage from the dwelling in terms of its um, assessment. And I contend that that's what should have taken place in the first instance. And that looking at the diagrams I've provided, the, the first photograph just shows a general streetscape. And, and uh, when, when each of these properties have put forward their representation or their, um, their development applications, they've been subject to, to the similar planning scheme. Or, possibly not the same one, but similar, and they've responded to the topographical constraints. So uh, garages are set in some cases. Well, in the street, there are three, three properties. If you look at my next diagram, uh, well, the planner has actually identified three properties that have, that have uh, structures within the 4.5 metre setback, and those structures are, are at number one, number 12, and number 14. Now, number one is a, is a garage, number 12, is a garage that's attached to the dwelling. It's, 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 it's appears as, as part of the dwelling, but it's a garage. And, and number 12 is a car, and number 14 is a carport. And in each case, those, the structures within, within, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go to my next diagram, which is, which is Bimberdin Court um, Streetscape um, aerial, aerial View from the list. My assessment is that there is that, that these that there is a setback, prevalent setback for dwellings, that's apparent from the diagrams I'm showing. There's uh, the properties on the highest side of a setback of around about three and a half metres. The properties on the low side, because there's different different topographical constraints, uh, there and they've chosen to have their their carports or, or vehicle access on their properties, have got a slightly different different uh, view because they they are responding to um, different topographical constraints. Um, so in, in the, the planner, so I, I'm, I'm contending that there is a general, there is a streetscape which, which is, uh, there is a sort of a prevalent setback within the street, uh, setback um, within the streetscapes of, of the dwelling setback on the high side approximately um, three and a half metres. Um, the planners have provided a diagram in his in his report that that contends that um, due to topographical constraints that the if the property if the proposal is to be set back four and a half metres, then there will be excessive excavation. But in that in that diagram, he hasn't separated the garage from the dwelling, so I have no issue with the, with the dwelling staying where it is. But I've, I've offered another diagram which shows that with with uh, with with uh, you know a reconsideration that the dwelling could easily stay within within. Uh, the commensurate setback, which I've shown, is is uh, is uh, yeah, on that diagram, uh, which is that diagram. Now, uh, the issue here is that also the proposal. So, if, if the next two diagrams show that by rotating the prop, the, by rotating the um, the dwelling component at 90 degrees, it could even be less excavation. So, so I think that the issue of topographical constraint does, is not is not sort of valid. Um, and the next diagram shows that, that in terms of uh, uh, streetscape, that 
the reorientation of, of that pavilion or that dwelling actually then conforms <coughs> better with the streetscape of other dwellings in the high side of the property of the street, which have a linear, a linear presentation to the street. That is, their short axis is, on, is against the slope, and their primary axis, the, 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 the longitudinal axis, is parallel with the street, which is commensurate with, with, uh, and so that the form that's proposed is not is not um, compatible with the streetscape. Do you, um, would you like to to wind up now? It's, it's the five five minutes. Yeah, I think also the last photograph, which I'm not sure if everybody has, but also shows that, um, that the planner in the report hasn't considered the visual bulk and uh, amenity due to the, to the, you know, this is a view looking back towards the proposed garage dwelling, <coughs> which, is, which is here. Uh, and, and so each the visual impact created by, by the fact that, a, that the dwelling component is, uh, is is the, has a zero setback. So, so in summary, in summary, I, I guess uh, there's 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 more to it. I'm open to to answering questions, but principally, the planning scheme uh, seeks seeks to the, the objectives of the planning scheme seek to have consistent separation between dwellings and their front street, provide consistency in the parent scale bulk massing and proportion of dwellings. It, it's very unusual to propose a dwelling that has zero setback from the street, and I believe if if uh, if this proposal proceeds as per the recommendation, it would set, it would set an unusual and, uh, and detrimental impact on this, on this location, as well as, as well as opening the door to other possible situations where a zero setback for a dwelling is permissible. The planning scheme clearly seeks to have a separation or a, a, a setback from the street, principally four and a half metres, but where, and, and separates the notion of garages, clearly separates the notion of the, the, the application of those, those uh, um, uh, clauses separates garages and dwellings. And, and when it comes to streetscape, they should all be con also be considered separately, that a building is actually composed of a garage and a dwelling. It's not then just a dwelling, which is what the planner has, uh, has suggested in the report. All right, thank you. Um, I'll open it to questions and we'll start with you, Alderman Briscoe. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for that, um, and thank you for your time on uh, the weekend where you went through some of these things, or all those things. Um, have you had a talk with the applicant? I have had a chat with the applicant this morning. Uh, sorry, the um, the architect who's... Architect, yeah. Uh, I guess my, my issue is that the issue of, applic of the, the, provi the placement of the dwelling on top of the garage is out of convenience. It's not due to any... any, any uh, topographical constraint because as the, all the other dwellings in the street have demonstrated, they have dealt with the topographical constraint by either placing themselves or the, 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 the form of the, the structure, but also you know, they haven't sought to be a zero setback from the street to deal with the topographical constraints for the dwelling component. My, my question uh, essentially is um, uh, the, uh, the cut-off date for a decision by council is the 20th July, I believe, looking at the report. Um, if we um, we can't do any redesigns because that's tantamount to refusal. So if uh, if at some stage uh, I or other perhaps me move a, a um, for a deferral to, for the uh, for the applicant and yourself to get together to see whether you can come up with a, uh, um, a design which you've suggested two two possible possibilities moving it um, parallel straight into the block or swing around 90 degrees, whether the applicant would be um, amenable to that. Uh, so would you, uh, um, I suppose it's a question for the applicant, but the applicant's not speaking today, I don't think so. Um, uh, the applicant is here. But the applicant is here, but it hasn't, is not a deprecation. No, not, not as, as yet, but we can ask yeah, a right. question of them. So but, I, uh, I might move for deferment, um, but, but I won't do it now. I'll let other people All right, say. thank you. Any further questions? Uh, Councillor Harvey, sorry, I didn't see your hand. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I was thinking along the same lines as well that maybe there is a there is some room for manoeuvring with the or negotiation with the neighbour. But just, uh, no, I guess it's a question for the director. So, yeah. But I understand the what, what you're offering here, what you're suggesting. Um, and I had a look at it today, and I did kind of think that the street was. This is probably. Not a question, sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's more of a comment. Councillor yeah. Dutta? 
Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a clarification. Uh, you, you refer to uh, the dwelling and the garage, and clause 10.42 P1 refers to a dwelling. So I, I have difficulty in uh, trying to grasp your argument uh, with regards to the garage being separate to the dwelling. Would you clarify that a bit more, please? Well, I can try to explain it, but maybe uh, the director might have a... But 10.4.2, 10 uh, if you setbacks and building for envelopes, in consideration of setbacks, clause A, if that's the right terminology, clause A refers to unless within the building area on a sealed plan of dwelling, excluding garages, carports and protrusions. So, so there's clause A1 deals with the dwelling component. So it's not when you apply, when, you, when it's assessed, it's assessed as two separate component or two portions or components of a, of a structure. The structure is proposed, but it's assessed one component of the dwelling, and then different different sort of considerations for a garage or carport. So it's suggesting then that 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 in terms of performance criteria, there are different topographical constraints for a dwelling as opposed to a garage. Now. Now, you know, directly put, a garage requires some reasonable access from, from the footway, from the roadway, so reasonably, so it needs to be reasonably proximate to the street. So there is a topographical constraint in, 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 uh, in considering where you can place a garage. But in regard to dwellings, those, those might be different topographical constraints. And, and I'm suggesting that, that the, there are no topographical constraints in this case for the dwelling, because as, as demonstrated by all the other dwellings in the street, they've been able to be accommodated within, within a reasonable setback from, the, from their frontages, and that nominally three and a half metres. That makes sense, Councillor Data? Thank you. And, and sorry, more, moreover, to, to answer the, the question, in consideration of setbacks in streetscape, well, I'll, I'll, that's, I think I've made that point about then, in consideration of streetscape, there's reference to setbacks of a building, and again, setbacks of a building should be considered as two separate components, dwelling and garage, not bundled together as one building, which the planner has done in his report. So he's, he's suggested that there are structures that are close to the street, but those structures that are less than three and a half metres setback are garages, not dwellings. Okay. Uh, Alderman Barakas. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Through you. So just going off, off that, um, you just quoted 10.4.2 A1. That's the acceptable solution. So we've, we've A1 is the acceptable solution. Then refers to the performance criteria on the other side. Yeah, correct. So, so the performance the, criteria refers to streets. Uh, if I may, I suppose my question is the we've moved like if we've moved on to the from the acceptable solution to the performance criteria. Yes. Where? How do you? Where does your suggestion come from that in the performance criteria we have to treat the, the garage and the dwelling separately? There's two separate, just... two separate clauses. There's A1 and A2. Yeah, but, A2 we, talk about, but, we, talk about, but we talk about P1 now because it's the performance criteria. They're both, they're both they're different clauses. Yeah, but once, right. once the acceptable solution is not yeah. passed, we move no, to but the acceptable solution criteria. for dwelling. And then, then a different clause, A2, and an acceptable solution P2, a different clause. P1 refers to dwellings, P2 refers to garages. I'll have more, um, I'll have more the questions to the director. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, they're clearly assessed differently and appropriately, I should say, because of different topographical constraints that might apply to them. And, and you know, clearly, a garage needs access from a street, whereas a house you can have steps or pathways to. Okay. Any further questions? Uh, look, thank you, and um, obviously we have the, the applicant here, so um, I don't know if, if you would mind providing that information to, to the applicant, Mr Palmese. Um, uh, yes, I can. Uh, and thank you, and uh, thank you. I mean, you've you've clarified a few few things for for me in relation to you know our site visit, my site visit um, yesterday. So thank you for going to pains to, to make it more uh, ex 
um, explicable. So thank you. So if you'd like thank to you. take your seat, thank yeah, you. Thank you. All right. Um, now, Alderman Briscoe, we do have the applicant. Is there any questions of the applicants that, that um, might have arisen from that deputation? And would, would the committee like to hear from the applicant? I think if the applicant's willing to speak, it would yep. probably help. Okay. Would you like to come forward, please? And you're Nathan, are you? Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Thank How you. Going? Thank you for coming along. Um, you've heard the the concerns raised, um, and so I'll open it to the committee to ask questions, or you can make it some sort of explanation if you like. Oh, if you've got anything to say first, I'm. I'm uh, not... No, happy to answer questions. Uh, I suppose my immediate question would be, with everything that the previous representative said. Um, is there a reason why it wouldn't be feasible to do what was suggested and have the have the, the dwelling on top turned over so it's not so close to the road? Um, I guess based on the brief that we were given from our client, which is part of this um, application is the terracing and creating a, a flat outdoor area off the front of the existing house. So turning 90 degrees eats into that space. Um, and also would mean that we'd have to redirect the stairs rather than going straight up to existing pathways, um, redirect them around that um, 90 degree change. Um, I think, I haven't seen these diagrams, so it'd be good to look at those, but uh, that uh, talked about it you, being less of a cut, um, but if the garage stays where it is and we spin at 90 degrees, we still need to excavate for the footings of the bit that overhangs unless it cantilevers. Um, also, um, yeah, number one, which was spoken about as well, has a deck on top of it. It's not just a garage, so it has a, um, a, a use of space for them next door. And I'd be interested to know why the downstairs, uh, the downslope um, topography is that different to up the upslope. I think they both have their top topographical constraints. One requires digging in and one requires um, building out off. Um, yeah. So would it, would it potentially, would it potentially, I'm just going off something you said just at the beginning of that, so would it potentially eat into the existing sort of outdoor Set area of the existing house. Is that what you're? Uh, no, we've got a. Pro we're proposing to extend that outdoor area because it's only um, a deck at the moment, and there's going to be some grassed area, a flat terrace. The site's very steep, so <coughs> just they're trying to use the worst part of the site and leave what we're creating as <coughs> for enjoyment of outdoor area rather than yeah. Alderman Briscoe? Um, very similar, I think. There were, would you be up to uh, discussing um, further with the, um, rep the person who made the deputation? Um, it seems like an 11th hour thing to me. It would have been great to have discussed this two or three weeks ago when it was advertised so that we could, could have discussed that with the client. But um, I think council's planners are supporting in the report this so i'm not sure why we need to look at it uh, now maybe do you agree that um, it would set a precedent, um, precedent for this area because the only three uh what do we call them now only three buildings uh which are garages or carports that uh, go into that three three point four setback or three point five setback so you would be setting your clients, if they got it built, would be setting uh, something that other people could then um, put in an application. That might be something to talk about. I, I thought plan, precedent and planning utters that. Like everything would need to be assessed on its own individual. Uh, I was just thinking, going along the objectives that were read out by the representer. Um, yeah, all right, thanks. Councillor Dutta. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, through the Chair, I just wanted, if you would like to comment on that particular point with regards to uh, P1 referring to dwelling and P2 referring to garage. What, what is your understanding of that um, well, as an architect? 
but well, set, it's good. Cool. to the setback. <coughs> I'd have, to, I'd have to have some time to, oh, okay, to re review you. it. Right. I, I thought that a, a garage could be part of a dwelling. Obviously, it's dealt with separately, and they often try, you know, in some schemes, they're trying to get the garage set back further than the, the front of a building. So often they're behind the dwelling line. So, um, no. I, I, okay, I, I'll, I'll ask the data. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And just um, for, for clarification, was there any, um, so there wasn't any discussion, is it something that you might have done um, or was there any any sort of we, uh, we capacity with, to have input? We met with Victoria, um, the planner, out on site and they spoke about the um, bulk and reducing the height and so we reduced the height um, down which, uh, which they've ag we've agreed on an RL for the parapet. Um, and her, her concerns were less to do with the garage and more to do with uh, making sure that the walls for the terrace became planted out, which we, we, was always the intention that it's not, these aren't going to be seen. So it, it really wasn't made apparent really to me that this was, that the big issue was having living, <coughs> living above the, uh, above the garage, some, some studio space above the dwelling. The clients are absolutely adamant that it's not going to be an Airbnb or anything. The client is an anaesthetist and the um, other clients are pharmacists. She has to come home late night. There's, um, you know, with COVID and things, they needed a, a, a space that they could um, isolate to and, you know, do work. And as we know, we need these sort of spaces now more than ever. So. Okay, all right, thank you. If there are no further questions, if you'd like to take your seat again, um, there's, there's not really the capacity to have this dialogue between, you know, from, from um, here, but anyway. Uh, so I'll open the item for discussion. Alderman Briscoe. Oh, look, I, I still think there is, should be an opportunity for the applicant and the, um, the representative that we've heard from today to. Um, to discuss possible solutions, uh, and uh, two possible solutions is one going around the uh, dwelling to rotate 90 degrees, and the other one to just slide it back so it would meet the uh, setback requirements. Um, I don't know whether the um, committee are of that view, but uh, I um, move for a deferment. Um, before you do that, I think there were some other questions of. of the the director. All oh, right. So, so you won't accept it just at the moment. Uh, no, if you wouldn't right. mind no, just no, I'll, parking I'll hold that, because I think uh, Alderman Harvey, you had a. Uh, well, Harvey, I, I you guess had I don't want to cut across Mike's question here as well, but I'll I'll, I'll pass it over to Mike. Thank you. Well, yeah. Thank you. Just a clarification with regards to the point that was made uh, that P1 refers to dwelling and P2 refers to garage, and there is a setback of zero. Could you just clarify that, please? Um, well, that, that, that's cor correct. Um, P1 does make reference to a dwelling. Um, that's not to say that a dwelling can't be located on the uh, front of the uh, of a zero uh, setback. The provisions uh, are set, um, have a setback from a frontage that is compatible with the streetscape in regard to any topographical constraints. Now, the officers that have considered that provision and are of the view that the proposal is currently before us does uh, satisfy that, that provision because of the um, specific uh, nature of, of the site. And it goes into some detail, the report goes into some detail, and I don't want to necessarily read that out, but, um, but uh, and, and clearly there is the other provision that does make uh, specific reference to car park car parks and uh, carports and garages so and I don't think there is any contention about the um, uh, the carport or the garage uh, component to it w what is um, at debate is um, the dwelling or the studio above um, and it's as I've indicated it's the officer's view that that studio does satisfy the perform relevant performance criteria of the scheme. Any further questions? Did you want to ask anything, Councillor Harvey? Or is that the... No, I, I guess it's around that issue as well. And 
you know, I guess if the like this, you've you've reviewed this as well. So in your mind, it's clear. But the the um, the uh, the planner has made a a reasonable judgment here. Yeah. Look, it's it's a um, fairly unique uh, proposal and unique set of circumstances. I mean, and they all are. <laughs> mm. um, they all are. Um, I mean, I I can understand um, um, the representor having a view that this uh, his uh, configurated outcome uh, would be more compliant. I would agree with him in relation to that because it would comply with the acceptable solution so far as the uh, dwelling uh, component is concerned. However, the scheme does provide a performance criteria for those that exceed the acceptable mm. solution. That, uh, that this proposal, as currently um, designed, meets those performance criteria. Well, fi uh, the final question is with regard to setting a precedent. It was suggested that building to the street could set a precedent for other blocks in this street who might want to do the same. Is everything based on its merit or the precedent of other existing structures carry any weight? For all unique circumstances, so um, uh, while um, um, so look, I, I think that um, a, and it does talk about impact on you know adjacent uh, residential amenities. So the, all of those uh, things are site specific, and you can't necessarily um, set a precedent. Um, uh, based on this proposal that might uh, have those sorts of impacts on, on other sites. So uh, they're all site specific. Mm. And based on merit. Yep. And based on merit, most definitely. Um, thank you, and this is all along the same sort of vein of, vein of questioning. So just on the topic of the treating the garage and the, the dwelling separately. Yep. So we've, just so I've got the, the officer's position on this, Right, you have treated the dwelling and the, the garage separately, but you both found them to individually be be compliant or be within the within the performance criteria. That, that's certainly my reading and discussion with the relevant officers. Sure, thank you. The director, just a couple of questions from me. So, what is the usual front setback for a dwelling um, in this vicinity? Uh, Four point five metres. Four point five metres, and and. So this essentially is to the boundary. Yeah, the, the unique, sorry, if I may um, just uh, add, the unique situation with this one is that uh, there is a significant uh, nature strip component. Um, uh, the front uh, boundary is some four metres back from the edge of the uh, footpath. Um, and that's a contributing factor in how it sits, uh, the officer's view is how it sits within the uh, streetscape more, more generally. So, um, yeah, the, the front boundary isn't the edge of the footpath, it is some four metres back from that. So, so there's a footpath and then the... Foot, yes. And then it's beyond the footpath? It's beyond the footpath. Because that looks like four metres there to me. Mm. If that's the boundary of the house, as yes, that's right. Yeah, uh, yes, that's oh, right. Sorry, here. Yes, yeah. so it is. Um, mm. That's right. So the boundary is some four metres from the actual footpath there. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, the other question is um, when when um, the planner the planner is is looking at comparing to other dwellings in the area, um, what what sort of setbacks are there in the, generally across the area? I mean, well, there's a, it's a variety of setbacks um, in terms of dwellings. Uh, there are some within the full uh, 0.5 metre uh, setback, including um, uh, number five, uh, for example. Um, there are no, there are no uh, dwelling with zero setbacks, and that's uh, that's been acknowledged in, in the officer's report that this is uh, somewhat unusual. Uh, it's fair to say it is a narrow um, narrow building, uh, and as I indicated earlier, it is somewhat mitigated by that. Um, uh, 
uh, that the, the width of the nature strip that exists. Um, and, uh, and one final question, just um, the, the bulk of the building compared to um, the uh, house next door, yeah. um, you know, like uh, obviously if that were at 90 degrees, it wouldn't be <laughs> so, so much of a, an impact, but um, is it uh, a reasonable impact to have yeah, at that look, boundary? I think um, the officer's uh, re uh, report acknowledges that the actual height of the building is uh, uh, the seal height, I think, of the adjacent um, windows of the adjacent uh, house in one uh, Bimberdine. So it, it is a relatively low uh, profile uh, element uh, as compared with its relationship with that uh, adjacent dwelling. Um, so I think it's um, that, that, that adjacent dwelling is uh, set higher. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Briscoe, back to you. Oh, look, I think we should... Uh, yeah, I, I, I won't put a, a deferment motion. Uh, uh, let's vote on it. Alderman Barakas. Thank you, Chair. There being no, no motion, then I'll, I'll move the officer's recommendation. I think they've got it right in this instance. I'll take, take, take the points that were made during the representations, but I think ultimately this is... Um, compliant with both the, the P1 and P2 provisions of the planning scheme and uh, I think it's something that we want to be encouraging from uh, um, yeah. Thank you oh, yeah, so look, I'll, I'll, I'll commend this Okay, yeah. further discussion No further discussion then I'll put the, the motion those in favour? No Those against? No those in favour? Aye. Pans. Councillor Coates, Councillor Harding and Alderman Barakas. And those against? Councillor Dutton and the Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, the motion is carried and that um, decision is a, a decision for committee. So um, that is the final... Uh, final decision. That's Three years. In the report, it says it's delegated to council because it was called in. Oh, okay, right. I have a, um, I called it in, but there were three representations. Yeah, would, 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 so would have come, it would have appeared here anyway. Yes, a, yeah, that's correct. It would have been a decision here, but we go to full council. Is that right? Um, well, because it was called in, it would normally go to full council. However, if the Alderman that called it in. Doesn't uncall it. I can't uncall it, but it no. would have come here anyway. Yeah, that's correct. So um, <laughs> the advice is that because it's called in, it goes to council. Right, OK. All okay, right, so that will be considered at council next, next week. Thank you. So we'll go back to 7.1.1, 68 Bay Road, Newtown. And I notice there's um, um, a comparison of buildings here, um, which aren't precedents, but anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so we have, um, this is uh, partial demolition alterations extension for six multiple dwellings. Can I have somebody move that, please? I'm happy to move it, Chair. Thank you. This, looks like, quite a this looks like quite a reasonable addition of two units. There seems to be ad adequate space. I don't know the site intimately, but there does seem to be a, enough space to include two more units. I do note that it's in a, a um, flood area, um, which is the whole, the whole area is a flood area, but I, um, I'm supportive of this tonight. I think it will add two units in a good location you know, on a site that I think can accommodate two additional units. Thank you. Further discussion? Echo what Councillor Harvey said. Okay, uh, just have a, a question just in relation to the, I mean, the, I see that the PLN S2 has part B is, um, I think it's the number of bins required and, oh, it's, yeah, it's the number of bins required part A. Um, is there, for multi-residential dwellings, are there always separated bins, like separated bins per unit or how, how do we... I think this has come up with the residential standards, hasn't it? It has. Mm. I think we uh, uh, were able to um, 
Yeah, accommodate some... Um, OK, yeah. right. Yeah. OK. Yeah, look, I think this is um, uh, quite a good um, application. It, so it sounds like it's a, an increased quality and quantity of stock, so um, I'm happy to support this. So if there's no further discussion, I'll put the motion as moved by Councillor Harvey. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Items carried unanimously. 7.1.222 Ascot Avenue. It's uh, an extension which is a deck. I'll open the item for discussion. Anybody want to move it as it is? Alderman Barakas, any comments? Um, and um, it, it sounds like there's not uh, overlooking or overshadowing um, of, of any particular area apart from the carport next door. So it sounds like it's... Uh, within the realms of uh, reasonable. So I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Items carried? It's Thank me. You. Thank you. Uh, 7.1.3, <laughs> 21 Burnside Avenue, Newtown. So this is a change of use to visitor accommodation. I'll open the item for discussion. Anybody want to move this one? I'll move that, Chair. Alderman Barakas. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Councillor Data. Yeah, I, I am of the view that uh, clause uh, 3.1.E.P.1 has not been satisfied because uh, it looks at the, the area of likely increase in noise and I think uh, for me that is going to, there is a, 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 an assumption made by the officers and similarly on the contrary one can make another, uh, you know, the alternative assumption that it can impact, and therefore I, I uh, would have difficulty supporting this. Thank you. Are you foreshadowing anything? Um, well, I, uh, I'll see how the debate goes. <laughs> All right, further discussion? Councillor Coates. Uh, look, thank you, Chair. I'll keep it quick. Um, I think the officers have done a very good job in assessing this one. Um, I note, I think it's 6.7.5, it talks about um, there is a separation between this dwelling and other dwellings. Uh, later on they talk about the fact that the uh, amenity of the suburb is obviously, I think it was an order of 3,000 odd um, houses and the addition of one to a, a short term permit wouldn't um, impact the overall amenity and, and use of the, uh, of the suburb. Um, so look, I think uh, obviously uh, with the visitor management plan, which seems to be good. Uh, I think the, the concerns in regards to amenity have been ameliorated and ultimately uh, it complies with the scheme as it is at the moment. So I, uh, I'll be supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Coates. The question Councilor through you, Hart. Chair, to the Director. If this is a split vote, does it um, go to you, Director, to call it? It'll go to Council. It's called in. No, it goes to Council because it's a split vote. It's lost. Yeah, was, okay. it call, was it called in? No, it's called in. If it wasn't called in, would it still go to council? Um, yeah, uh, no, uh, yes, it would because it's not, yeah, it's lost. Mm. And at council, if it's a split vote, yep. do you decide? I'll decide it, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Further, oh, Alderman Brown. Oh, Lord Mayor, just quick because this is becoming a bit like Groundhog Day, I think. <laughs> discussing the the same application for the exact same reasons. I'm not convinced that the argument holds that every single short stay application that we get seems to have an un, um, unreasonable amount of noise, and I think that assumption is a foolish one to make. But as Councillor Dutta said, we're all entitled to take alternative interpretations, and I'll uh, take the interpretation that the officers um, put forward. Um, and I suppose we'll be having this out next week before Council Chair. The discussion? If not, uh, oh, Councillor Coates, you wanted to say Look, just a question out of interest, um, and the director may not wish to answer this, or, or uh, uh, in the instance where it ends up being a tie vote and a tie vote, um, does a discussion that take place influence the final decision made, or does the director tend to defer to the officer's uh, report? Thanks. 
I previously? Uh, I, well, look, I have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's fair to say if there are uh, new facts that are presented during the debate, um, I will take those into, into account if they're relevant. Right. Okay. So w do we have a foreshadowed motion if this should fail? Yes, all right, Councillor Duff, thank you. We could save um, time, couldn't we? Yeah, we, could. we could, well, perhaps we could, but uh, all right, I'll put the motion as moved by Alderman Barakas. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? No. no. The show of hands, those in favour? I hate to Alderman. say the left and the right, but Alderman I won't say. <laughs> I'm the only one over here. Right. 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 Just hear the vote, please, again. Uh, Alderman Briscoe, Alderman Barakas and Councillor Coates. And those against? Butter, Councillor Harvey and the Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, the motion is lost. Uh, can we have the foreshadowed motion, please? Yeah, under clause 31EP1, that it be refused. Okay, all right. Any discussion? I think we've had the discussion. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Aye. Show of hands, those in favour? Butter, Councillor Harvey and the Deputy Lord Mayor. Those against? Go, Alden Barakas and Councillor Coates. Okay, so the motion is lost. It will now go to full council. Thank you. Uh, we've done Bimberdeen, so we're up to uh, item eight, which is reports. And it's the eight point one is the submission on the thirty year Greater Hobart plan. Uh, open the item for discussion, Alderman Barakas. I'm happy to move that, Chair. Thank you. Any discussion, Councillor Coates? Um, yeah, look, just uh, for discussion purposes and noting, this will go to full council. Uh, first, a question for you. Yep. Um, look, it's a very good report. I think it was 150 something pages from memory, and then there's this uh, the summary one, which was the consultation. Um, I have a bit of concern with a, a chunk of it. Um, I think we run the risk of setting up the city to uh, more of the same and, and, and some of the sort of failures that we're seeing now, um, I guess in the, in the housing supply. Uh, I'm not sure that this is going to set us up for anything different. Um, I, I will flag that I've got concern in regards to the 70-30 move. Um, I would note that the report as it currently stands, and they've identified some issues if you look at um, the officer's uh, reports in front of us. I mean, I think they've Correct. Right. Uh, so, so I'll put it up on this one. Um, if you look at their um, thing, it talks about the urban forest being concerns in regards to the. Uh, where are we? Du, 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 du. Um, Page. What page is that? Page 441. Is that 441. Um, yes, 5.1.3, we'll raise that. I think it's really good. Um, it, it does raise a few other concerns. It notes that we didn't meet our infill target previously, and so I'm not sure that moving to a heavier infill target is going to necessarily result in us further hitting that target. Um, if you look at the, if you read in the report, it identifies areas for growth um, amongst the four Greater Hobart Councils. You know, one of them snug. Um, I went onto Google Maps and I looked and it's an hour on public transport to get to Snug. Um, I would put it for most, not all cyclists, but for most cyclists, if you're looking to do that as a way of commuting, Snug is just too far. Um, it would seem odd to me that we would sign up to a plan that identifies a greenfield development site where you have to literally traverse miles and miles and miles of empty space to get to that site um, and then hoping we're going to get better public transport um, activities or better um, sort of density and development by doing that. Um, I think the report, when I was reading through it, correctly identifies that what Hobart is missing is the, the quote, missing middle. Um, and it highlights, uh, to my mind at least, the need for some more high density developments along transport corridors. Um, but it then highlights that some of these areas where it could happen would be, for example, in Sandy Bay, where we know, and the officers have identified this, that there's gonna be difficulties because of the heritage concerns. Um, I would posit that potentially what we as a council should consider is that that missing middle is potentially going to be greenfield development from the city of Hobart. Um, you know, I'm reminded that 
the border of Hobart doesn't stop at the top of the southern outlet, it stops, you know, halfway to Kingston. Um, but that whole area is not currently in the um, in any sort of in any of this uh, of this sort of plan, and I appreciate it's currently outside the um, Southern Tasmania land use border, urban growth boundary. Sorry, but um, but anyhow, look, I uh, overall it's pretty good. But um, for the purpose of discussion, there's a few things that sort of raise a red flag with me, um, and obviously I think a lot of it is that this plan at the moment seems to assume that by creating more infill we'll get the better outcomes, but I'm not sure that in a practical sense we're actually gonna be able to deliver that based on our experience so far. Um, I also have fears that it does seem to push a lot of development outside these four councils that are included. Um, and also even within these four councils it pushes a lot of the development to the far flung reaches. Um, and ultimately I fear that distance matters. So when it comes to public transport, when it comes to other forms of transportation, if you've got physically more distance, um, it, it, it becomes ultimately more convenient and easier to use a motor vehicle because it's just physically harder to get there on a bike, on a scooter, um, public transport routes because you just need more and more services to have the frequency. So um, look, overall it's a good report, but uh, there's a few a few things in it as I read it that um, you know, are probably interesting ones for discussion and consideration by, by us as councillors and by us as a council. So. I might just um, ask Mr Noy to, to answer that question about why why the, the infill target wasn't reached. Is there any sort of clear identification as to why that wasn't reached? Um, well, I, I understood that the target was reached. Yeah, I understand that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm interested in that comment. Um, um, and, I'll find a thing. Right? And secondly, um, yeah. Uh, seven or... Previously it was 50-50, and um, so that was a 20-year plan, as I understand it. Uh, or the Strillis was a 20-year plan. But this is over a... Thir th you, you've got to remember that this is over a 30-year uh, time horizon, um, and you can't necessarily see this in the context of, of the current... Um, projections. Um, you, you've got to see this as, as a much more longer term uh, plan. Um, and in fact, uh, um, the 40,000, or sorry, the uh, 20,000 of the 30,000 ad additional dwellings uh, proposed to be located in Hobart and Glenorchy, um, which are the most centrally uh, positioned um, council so far as employment and education is concerned. So um, while there might be some uh, occurring further out, um, I, I, said, I would suggest that Snug is just a very small component uh, of that other uh, uh, 10,000 dwellings. That, Presumably uh, the hub isn't necessarily Hobart when we're talking about Snug residents. No, 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 okay. that's right. Uh, I think Councillor Harvey was next. Yeah, I was just going to question Councillor Coates on the same sort of issues uh, as well and whether he is arguing against urban sprawl, um, even though he supported the extension of urban growth boundaries, I think, on all three occasions. Mm -hmm. They've come to us. Is that well, correct? Through your chair. That or... I mean, sure. So, I mean, this document in front of me identifies the Drady Point, which you're referring to. Mm -hmm as an identified area for greenfield development. Mm -hmm. And it will be. So what I voted on is consistent with what's in front of us. Mm. But not that extension of the growth boundary in that particular area. So there'll still be growth there without that particular pushing of the growth boundary. Do you want to add anything, Councillor Harvey? No, okay. look, I'm, I'm comfortable with what the, what the officers are proposing um, in their suggestions. Uh, what's the matter there? Uh, sorry, um, <laughs> I was just looking. I, I was just looking at the plan, and uh, Snug's not. Um, um, but you it, it's outside of the, um, the, the the expected growth areas. It might make reference to areas outside of this mm. as uh, possible growth, uh, such as uh, Sorrell and Brighton and yeah. uh, and others. But um, and there is a table, and I can't recall whether I saw Snug in it. I'm just scrolling through the 300 yeah, pages to find it. But, but I'm comfortable with the suggestions of building stronger resilience into the plan. 
I think that's really essential. But I am, but I also do think that a lot of the important um, propositions or the important areas have been mentioned. You know, there, there has been a focus on, on I'm just trying to sc scroll through, finding solutions to challenges, uh, provide development opportunities, greater housing, diversity, more inner city living, more efficient transit options, protect local character and heritage, adapt to increased risk from bushfire and climate change. So I think you were working with a relatively reasonable plan in order to come up with some additional points. So I'm happy with both this draft and um, all that we you know, the consultation, but also the, the council's ability to influence the outcome, I hope. And do you think we do have a, an opportunity to influence the outcome? Because if we can't influence the outcome, there's what's the point of the consultation? So I'm hoping that we, our points do get included, especially along the resilience line. Yeah, look, I think, well, yeah, clearly we can influence and we should uh, be able to influence um, uh, the outcome if there are, uh, are legitimate uh, concerns. Look, there, uh, Snug is referenced here, and I do, um, I do um, acknowledge, um, uh, 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 it's, uh, sorry, it's page seven of the, of the uh, summary. It does talk about Kingborough Primary Infield in, in and around Kingston, CBD, green, Greenfield at Huntingfield, and a mix of infield and greenfield in already identified future growth areas at Margate and Snug. So these are already identified growth areas in, in, in those areas, but um, as I said, this, that would be a, uh, a, a very uh, minor proportion of the overall uh, growth uh, pro uh, projections. Alderman uh, Briscoe. Uh, thank you, Chair. Look, uh, yeah, I think generally the report's been very good and I generally support the officers. I do have concerns about Druthy uh, Point. Druthy, um, where there's a whole area um, to the south and to the east that's considered a high growth area and a greenfield site development. Um, uh, one, I'm very familiar with this area, uh, mainly because uh, I have done a lot of walking in this area. There is a, a historic uh, whaling station, or former whaling station, one of the earliest ones in Hobart. I think it's called Tri Point anyway, uh, at the end of... And also along this... Um, whole um, peninsula on, on the eastern side there are Aboriginal middens. Um, plus I presume um, the, uh, that would, any greenfield site would have to take account of that. Plus uh, if we think in 30 years time we might be starting to experience uh, sea level rises. Uh, is this a good place to have greenfield sites right on the waterfront there? Um, we, we know that we're going to have inundation in our own municipality in 50 years' time, possibly, 30 to 50 years' time. Uh, so uh, suggesting a greenfield site on the waterfront, that truthy point, I think, uh, and, and a, a very dense uh, greenfield site too. It's not a it's 2,000 uh, residents there. I still think um, there are a lot of concerns there. Now, I think the idea of having a 30-year plan is a good one. You know, I don't think we've ever had at this level of detail in my time on council, <laughs> which is nearly 30 years. Um, uh, and I, I think it's, it's the right time to do good planning. Uh, and also, I don't think we've solved the problem of um, Sorrel and New Norfolk being growth areas, because that's what's happening out there. And I think the market is telling us, has shown that cheap land, cheaper land and cheaper houses means that people will move out of the city. Um, and whilst this is uh, four councils, I think, um, I, I suppose, uh, Sorrell is a separate council, but um, um, in a view there probably should be a greater Southern Hobart plan as well, not only the four um, metropolitan councils. But no, generally I agree with, I don't agree with Truthy Point. Uh, development, but um, that's just one part of it. So the rest of it, I think, is the right on the uh, right track. Okay, thank you, Councillor Data. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. Now, I think the report, you know, has some very good principles and uh, very good points made in there uh, with regards to you know housing as a right, uh, with regards to diversity, affordability, etc. So I think there are very good points in there. Uh, my only uh, uh, 
question is with regards to climate change and its impact. Uh, while there's a mention, you know, I don't see the strategic uh, uh, methodology in there, so that's just a question of points that I'm raising. And the other point that I have is in regards to the population uh, increase. Now, there is mention of uh, interstate migration and also international. Uh, is, is it possible to know what sort of a uh, percentage of uh, interstate migration and international migrations coming in? And the other question that I have is with regards to, you know, it, it uh, projects about 1,000 houses per year, I think. Now, considering, say, last year, what, what sort of, or how many have we built an infill and greenfill? Do we have that sort of information? Yeah. Um, really? Yeah. Look. Good point. Oh, we have <coughs> that information so far as our own um, local government area is concerned. Um, in Hobart, I think the, the figure there is um, for, for Hobart uh, forecasting on average 350 new dwellings uh, being constructed uh, each year over the 30-year uh, time horizon. Um, the, the last, um, this, this financial year to date, we, we approved 225 new dwellings um, and we issued building approvals for uh, 201 uh, new, new dwellings. So I, I can only comment on yes. uh, Hobart's um, context. So, um, yeah, and this is a 30-year uh, horizon, so there'll be some years that will be uh, down. There, m there may be some years that are uh, up on that on that number. So, um, and and look, um, it it's this is not an exact um, planning uh, horizon necessarily. If it takes a little bit longer to achieve uh, those numbers, then. Um, that's uh, uh, envisaged within the plan. If it takes less, it's also envisaged within the plan. So, so, so the other questions are around migration from interstate and international. Yeah. I, look, I don't have those figures, but uh, I'm sure that they could be uh, yep. provided. Um, in, Perhaps we could yeah. have those for before the council meeting and the impacts of climate change. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or the. The response to climate change. Yes. Yeah. Look, I, um, uh, I, I, I just don't have the information in front of me, but I'm happy to um, provide that for you. Um, oh, Councillor Coates. Yeah. Uh, look, through you, Chair, uh, for the purpose of discussion and the benefit of Councillor Data, population.gov.au breaks it down by state and by local government area, and it population baseline. Increase, decrease, and the categories are net international, net interstate, births and deaths, forecast. and forecast. Yeah, yeah. okay. For 10 years. Thank you. Um, just a, I have a question just in relation to part six. It's the um, Greater Hobart Plan implement, implementation plan must ensure that all measures for providing affordable social and community housing encu including encouraging more build to rent need to be fully explored. Um, recently we, we uh, have heard about uh, the end of the NRAS scheme, the National Rental Affordability Scheme, and 10-year funding has, has been reduced or has been, um, has ended. Uh, what, what sort of safeguards would there be, um, or is that part of what, what this, this um, implementation, implementation yeah. is? Yeah. We, we know that um, we have the best plans. Um, it's it's the implementation of them and how how we st uh, structure that um, and how we resource that that uh, will be the success or otherwise of, of the plan. Um, so we're uh, very keen to ensure that that um, implementation plan is robust um, and. And there's commitment um, at all levels of government. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion? If not, I think Alderman Varakis moved this. Um, so I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. 
Those against, items carried unanimously, and that will go to full council for Monday. 8.2 is, um, we have Ms Turner here. It's the Compliance and Investigation Policy and Infringement Review Guidelines. Do you want to come up to the table? And uh, Mr Noy, do you want to, to make any description or? Well, look, this is, uh, this, this is a public, uh, probably a policy that's been uh, warranted for some time, I suppose. It, it provides uh, clarity for uh, officers and elected members and importantly, the, uh, the public um, generally. Um, and it's a, a consistent policy with uh, other uh, local government uh, uh, jurisdictions. But um, Ms Turner, you might want to add um, some further points to yeah, that. Yeah, look, I, I think you've covered it, Director, uh, through you, Chair. It's two new policies, um, the Compliance and Investigation Policy and the Infringement Review guidelines, they really sit side by side. Um, we are a little bit out of step with other capital cities and in fact a lot of municipal councils around Tasmania have these policies in place. Um, they're really to guide consistent decision making and to give the community an idea about how we undertake compliance activities and how we undertake reviews of infringement notices. Um, so it's really about communicating our methods and procedures to the community, but also giving elected members an opportunity when people question you to be able to point to a policy that says that's what we do and that's how we do it. So we've got consistency and we've got transparency. And was there any, any one event that kind of kicked this off or was it, um, was it just a matter of needing that sort of compliance and consistency? No, it's, it's well overdue. Um, they've been in development for a little while. Um, it was just resourcing it to get it before <laughs> the council in a format that um, we were all happy with. It's undertaken consultation internally um, and we've benchmarked it against other council's policies and guidelines. Um, so it was just about the resourcing in order to get it to um, elected members. And in 4.6, um, the regulated community means, it says that the regulated community means a group of individuals defined by their responsibility to comply with a given law, regulation, condition, standard or policy. Uh, and examples include property owners and occupiers, business op operators, dog owners, developers, builders and plumbers, motor vehicle, motor vehicle owners and uh, users of public open space. Um, is that exhaustive or...? No, they're just examples of what it would include. Um, obviously, they cover situations for building, plumbing, um, planning, environmental health, bylaw enforcement, um, but it's certainly not exhaustive. Oh, and sorry, and of course, dog management. Um, you know, anticipate situations where the cats might be included. You know, that is not exhaustive. It's just an example of how the where the policy might be applied. Okay, and and just one last question. Um, so, um, compliance with smoking. <coughs> Um, bylaws in the inner city, would this be covered by that? Yes, um, yes it would, there's, there's nothing to exclude it, mm. um, so yes it, it could be covered by this. We obviously already have a um, separate enforcement procedure that is followed for smoking that is undertaken by a, a dedicated officer in environmental health, so some of the policies with respect to investigation and our risk base um, investigation and how we dedicate resources would be applied slightly differently because there's already a regi regi regime in place with respect to that. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Ornwin Briscoe. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so a lot of this would be crystallising what you do now. That's correct. There's nothing new in this. It's not going to change our practices and procedures. It's just going to give insight to the community about why we do things. Yep. Um, and I, I've had the concern for a while, and so uh, quite a few uh, we've had emails and communication from a few people uh, last while, little while. Um, when um, it has to go before a court, it is expensive for the um, expensive for the person who's complaining. Um, I, I've just had another scan through the guidelines. Uh, is there other ways we can, um, rather than going through a court, if we've done an internal review, um, a non-expensive way 
I don't think there's any mention of ombudsman, because an ombudsman has a right to do a ministerial review of decisions of local government authorities. They do, but that is at the choice of um, the complainant. They can go to the ombudsman themselves. It's not council who goes to the ombudsman and seeks a review. Could we have somewhere in the policy, if we're going to refer people to this policy, that you would say, um, uh, mention the ombudsman review? We, we could certainly include something. It would probably typically uh, fall under section eight that we can indicate that if they're not satisfied by council's action, they yeah. can seek a review of an um, yeah. well, ombudsman. Thank you for that. The, the, um, I don't know whether you have to, uh, we have to move an amendment to that or, or could it just be included, but um, uh, there is a, a general, um, <laughs> like, you can never beat City Hall type uh, attitude out there, which is probably most time correct. Um, but if, if we're saying, yes, we'll do an internal review and go through this process, but there's also a means of having an independent review that doesn't going to cost you money like going to a court. Yeah, so it's pretty important to give for those um, people who have mentioned um, uh, it's OK for rich people to do things, and uh, but where do the poor people to get justice? So. And we know that, uh, I haven't looked at the statistics for uh, uh, a review of decisions by the Ombudsman in the last few years, but when, uh, uh, but I, uh, and a few of them have um, found fault with the Hobart City Council. This is years ago, quite a few years ago. Um, so I think, it, but it's important that everyone has, knows if they do have a issue that they can't get satisfaction uh, going to an independent body like Ombudsman. So I don't know, uh, through you, Chair, we'll have to move the amendment. I think we still Yeah, we, can in, we certainly can in include. Yeah. yeah, thank yeah. you. And is that the only mechanism for external review? Uh, th there are a number of mechanisms if we formally undertake proceedings. For example, if we uh, serve an order under the Building Act or Land Use Planning Approvals Act or Public Health Act, there are rights of review, um, for example, to TASCAT. Um, so they are, there are rights of review. That's not included because what this is designed to do is tell the public and the community about why we undertake certain actions, not about the actions that they can undertake. Right, so does this, this kind of changes that though, doesn't it? Look, we do have a section in there about complaints and how we will deal with complaints. So it, it, it does fit some ways to say, if you're not satisfied by the way that council deals with your complaints, you've got the right to, to seek review with yeah. the ombudsman. Yeah. Um, I think once we start introducing every sort of avenue okay. for review, as in rights of appeal, there's certainly obligations when we serve notices on a, 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 um, an offender that we have to tell them those rights in any event. We wouldn't ordinarily tell them they have a right to go to the ombudsman unless it's an internal complaint that we're responding to. Um, so it's slightly different and slightly nuanced, but I think um, there is no problems with providing the information about the ombudsman in the policy. Good, thank you. So we'll have that reflected in the, the motion. I don't think anybody's moved it yet, have they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to, Jen. Okay, and any further comments? No further comments? I'll, I'll put the motion. Uh, those in favour? Aye. Those against? Items carried. Thanks very much for that work. Item 8.3 is the monthly planning statistics. I move. Thank you, Alderman Barakas. Any comment? If not, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? Items carried. Item Item 8.4 is monthly building statistics. Can I have somebody move that, please? Councillor Coates, you scratched your head. <laughs> That's moving, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading this report. Yeah. Uh, so you're happy to move that. Um, any comments? No comments, so I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? Items carried. The uh, delegated decision report is 8.5. Alderman Barakas, thank you for receiving and noting. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Aye. Items carried. 8.6 City Planning Advertising Report. Uh, Ms Aby, is there anything of note that you uh, want to point out here? Thank you, Chair. There is um, a significant proposal at 1 Notpwood Street, so that's the corner of Notpwood and Montpelier. Um, so that um, has, has been before UDAP and will come before the Council since it's a, a major development. Um, 
that there's also, I'll just mention one at 31 Swanston Street, which is uh, one existing dwelling on the site with six new proposed. That will come to the council due to the number of representations. I'm happy to provide a, a brief update on the visitor accommodation applications as well, if you like. That, um, is that the centre care application or? No, oh, that's another no, one, is it? No, I don't think so. No. 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 no it isn't. Okay. All right. Any further comment? Uh, um, the one Knockwood Street one, uh, I thought there was a... a Councillor a Harvey and Councillor Coates, can we just... We're almost finished the meeting. Sorry, keep going, Alderman Bristol. Uh, so one Knockwood Street, we, we, um, we approved a development a couple of years ago. That's not a current development anymore. It's, it's run out, has it? Or? Through your chair, that oh. permit is still live. Yes. Not for too much longer. So this is an alternate proposal that the developers are hoping to get approved and 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 build, as I understand it. But they may well yet move on the earlier approval. I don't okay. Know. Thank you. Right. Interesting. Alderman Barakas. On that, um, is are the developers that are pushing this application through or applying for this application? Sorry, are they the same people? Are they the same owners and applicants that? Got the previous one through. Through chair, I understand the property has been sold. So there's a new developer. People, okay. Okay. Uh, now, who moved that? Gordon Rusco? Oh. No, I think it was. Barakas, okay, all right. Uh, put that. Those in favour? Aye. Those against. Item is carried. Responses to questions without to questions without notice. Can I have somebody move that, please? Councillor Coates, thank you. There's no discussion on this, so I'll put that. Oh, and we'll add um, 5.1 from the closed to to, to this. Uh, there's no discussion, so I'll put that. Those in favour? Aye. Those against. Items carried. Item 10 is questions without notice. Any questions without notice? Alderman Briscoe. Uh, it's my perennial uh, question, <laughs> which uh, um, is uh, the right uh, uh, the request for extra additional information from the UTAS rezoning uh, proposal at Sandy Bay at the current uh, Sandy Bay campus. Has that been fulfilled? Um, no, three chair, uh, not at this stage. I have a supplementary question, Chair. Supplementary question. Uh, has some information been provided by the university to? It has, Chair. Thank you. Any further questions, Alderman Barakas? Back at that, the, the time limits that were prescribed in the in, in question, um, the request for information, have they been met? Or am I thinking? That, am, I, am I possibly thinking? Were you talking about the, the public meeting? You talking about different questions, Councillor Briscoe? Uh, yeah, through you, Chair, the, it's the, the uh, request from uh, further information from the Council Planning Division to the University about their rezoning. Okay. Yep. Um, Mr. Noy, is there any um, reason? why we could not advise, advise um, or provide advice in relation to short stay accommodation as to the options of um, retaining properties as, oh no, actually you know, don't worry about that, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out the, the uh, question a little bit more <laughs> in detail. Don't make it up as you go along. <laughs> All right, so if there are no further questions without notice, Okay, do we have to put that or let's just move on? No, okay, uh, so item 11 is closed portion of the meeting. Thank you, Alderman Briscoe. Uh, I put that, those in favour, right. those against. Item is carried and I thank those who have been watching